but some kids will feel good for discussing lot of mcqs in a variety in the sense in a from multiple chapters so we have discussed only one chapter so far this will include some many chapters at least some 40 to 50 mcqs will cover then we we'll go back to the other chapters okay okay this again answer has been given wrongly in your textbooks giant cell is seen in listen which lesion which lesion among the list options has got giant cells or osteoclastoma will it have giant cells what's other name for osteoclastoma giant cell tumor so that it's straight forward okay chondroblastoma so the answer given was actually osteoclastoma which is wrong osteoclastoma has giant cells but that's not complete the chondroblastoma again has giant cells the osteitis fibrosa cystica what all the spelling errors please i mean you have lot more to see spelling errors are there please bear osteitis fibrosa cystica what it is where do we come across this what is the other name for this what is the other name for osteitis fibrosa cystica von dreckling hausen disease where do we come across this osteitis fibrosa cystica in hyperparathyroidism we have brown tumors repeated hemorrhage repeated repetitive granuloma all these will result in osteitis fibrosa cystica dissecting lesion in the bone due to hyperparathyroidism due to resorption of the bone high because of high levels of parathyroid hormone resorption of the bone resulting weakening of the bone frequent micro hemorrhage micro fractures fractures micro hemorrhages reparations result in giant cell lesion because of micro hemorrhages you have brown color you will have a edematous appearance a tumor like appearance a tumor okay so won't it have giant cells yes it will have you have other lesions also giant cell rich lesions of the bone like your giant cell rich osteosarcoma you have a special variety like that and your non ossifying fibroma cherubism there the lee bulky this area is in children so all these are we have lot more to add to this is all these are giant cell rich lesions of the bone so this question has come first mainly to stress that this question has been discussed wrongly in your textbooks okay so what be the answer now hmm chondroma no no the question is seen in what is chordoma again now uh, one of the high yield area question is this. what is chordoma it's a tumor they will decide the commonly in the cervico cervical junction the neck or usually in the lumbosacral joint this will be the common site for chordoma most common question asked in chordoma is the cell of origin what is the cell of origin for chordoma physaliferous cells note it down a must know stuff physali p h y physaliferous cells are the cell of origin for chordoma it arises from the notochord that's why chordoma the tumor of the cord notochord so chordoma so chordoma will have and again one classical um description for physaliferous cell is bubbly appearance will have so bubble bubbly appearance okay so they will not be so there will not be any giant cells in chordoma commonly any finding can be present in any tumor rarely it's about common finding so chordoma will not have giant cells so osteoclastoma is a giant cell rich lesion chondroblastoma is a giant cell rich lesion osteitis fibrosa cystica is a giant cell rich lesion next question is low complement levels seen in so when will have low complement levels in any lesion when there is complement fixation when complement is serum gets used up in the lesion you find reduction in the complement level serum form that's a basis that's a basic funda okay so will you find low complement levels in psg and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis nephritis will there be any reduction it will be the uh, term typical term you know like transient hypocomplementemia you know, that has to be it's a must know point again so transient hypocomplementemia in the sense a big transient reduction in the complement levels okay so it will not be reduced beyond 3 months maximum limit is 3 months beyond that if the complement levels are very low you have to go back and reduce the diagnosis that's strong the finding is okay so will there be hypocomplementemia in psgn yes okay 
So will there be MP in MPGN? How many types are there? Good, Rishi. Initially there will be reduction in the complement. It's good. Uh, okay, MPGN. How many types are there? One, two, three. Okay, so in all the types, there will be reduction in the complement levels. So depending upon the times, there will be different uh, levels of reduction in the different types of complements. Like early complement will be reduced in MPGN type one. Late complements will be reduced in MPGN type. 2 and type 3. Depending upon their uh, pathogenesis, we will discuss that in detail in pathology later in some other class. And a good pasture syndrome, what is the pathogenesis of good pasture syndrome? What is the pathogenesis of good pasture syndrome? So here there is, it's, uh, it's an example for autoimmune disorder. The autoantibodies are directed against the alpha 3 chain of type 4 collagen. So again a must know point, you can't afford to say you don't know, so you have to be you thorough with it. So alpha 3 chain of type 4 collagen is attacked by the autoantibodies to which class of autoimmune uh, hypersensitive disorder this belongs to. Antibodies directed against the antigens present on the surface or in the matrix. Type 2. This is localized organ specific autoimmune disorder. So this this anti this uh, alpha three chain is shared between renal glom uh, uh, base membrane and pulmonary base membrane. That's why this patient will have pulmonary renal hemorrhage. So hemoptysis and hematuria combination one of the cause common causes good pasture syndrome. Fine. So good pasture syndrome patient will have recurrent hemoptysis and hematuria. But the patient will not have perennial throughout the year uh, hemoptysis hematuria. But what triggers? What triggers uh, hemicidia hemoptysis? This when a patient gets exposed to viral infections. The patient gets exposed to hydrocarbon solvents. So when all such things happen, the patient will have episodic hemoptysis and uh, hematuria. So what will be the prognosis in good pasture syndrome? Good pasture syndrome might result in RPGN. RPGN, how do you, uh, what will be the prognosis of RPGN? When something is rapidly progressive, you can't expect to have a good prognosis. So, do you find present in good patches syndrome? Yes, because when good patches syndrome progresses to RPGN, that will have presence. So, that will result in a very bad prognosis. That's a scenario of good patches. So, coming back to the question, do you have complement level, hypocomplementemia in good patches? The mechanism is different. Antibody comes and attacks the antigen. Not much of complement involvement, so no hyper complement. You have to understand the mechanism. Okay. And next is Wegener's spelling mistake. Please bear with me. So Wegener's granulomatosis. What is the pathogenesis in Wegener's? How there is disease? Now? What is the reason for the disease in Wegener's? Anka. Good. It's C anka in Wegener's granulomatosis. So, Wegener's granulomatosis, does it have complement involvement? No. Here, the disease is due to presence of anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. They will take care of it. No involvement of complement. So, no hypocomplementemia. Infective endocarditis? Yes. Infective endocarditis is one of the examples for immune complex endocarditis, immune complex neutrophil disease. So, since this in involves immune complex, it will also involve complement. So, this will bring down the complement levels. So all these are examples for called hypocomplementemia conditions. Except your good pastures and veganess. PSGN. PSGN is associated with post cryptococcal glomerular nephritis is associated. So we need to discuss few points under this PSGN. Okay, this this PPT was made and given to me, so I couldn't add any explanatory notes to this. So we have to discuss it orally, only salient features, not in depth to cover the maximum question. So PSGN earlier days what was the antigen detected? The sense the body is mounting an immune response. It's a cross reaction. So what antigen of the kidney was attacked? Earlier days it was uh, called as NSAP, nephritic strain associated protein. That was the antigen. But now it has been more uh, better antigen that has been detected is SPEB. SPEB, 